I got the picture. Hey guys, this is press any button and we are in Photoshop right now because we're going to be working on some UI assets and components for our video game. So what better place to start than an image creating software thingy. So the reason why I'm here is just to show you how to export images from Photoshop or any like software into your project. So we're going to go file, save as and you're gonna find the location for your actual game. So right here, I'm in my creative cloud. But if I go through, navigate, duh, 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 then I can eventually find the folders for my project. I go to rail shooter here, I go to assets, and I can save it in one of these folders or just in the assets folder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert it to a PNG or save it as a PNG. Just hit that save as type and you'll get the PNG option. Now the reason why we use a PNG is because we've got a transparent background and if we use a JPEG or something like that then we would just have a big square with our image on top of it and that's not what we want. Now that we've got that PNG we can hit save and it will be added to our assets folder. So when we return to Unity our component will be there waiting for us. So there you see, I've got my Revolver UI. Once it's here, your texture type is going to be set to default. You wanna change that to 2D UI and then hit apply. Mine are grayed out right now because I haven't actually done anything. So there's nothing to apply, but you'll have these buttons where you can interact. Okay, so we have this UI component over here and how are we going to add it to our actual game well the first thing we want to do is we want to go over to that canvas that we created last time that's hosting that flash image and we're going to right click on the canvas go to ui and image when we create a ui image you can see that it appears in our game view and to get a better view of it we can go over to our canvas 2d hit F and then we see what it looks like in general so I don't want that image there but what I do want is this meter image now how I got that image was I went to source image revolver UI and I sourced the image from there so I select it and then once I've double clicked and got that selected then it will appear on our canvas and also appear in our game view because our canvas is overlaid onto our camera. Now the whole point of this part is to make a health system that isn't just a health bar. Been getting kind of bored of doing those on the channel so I thought we'd challenge ourselves with something a little different. As you can see, the thought behind this was we've got a revolver chamber and three of these chambers are going to host our health dots and three of these chambers are gonna host our power up dots when we get to upgrades and things. So really the most important part of what we're doing with the canvas is setting up these three little icons here. Now you can have your icons be whatever you want, but they're just gonna be counters for your health. So they're gonna be the way that your player is able to see, oh, I've only got two health left, I've only got one health left, and I'm dead. So. If you did make a backdrop image like this, then what you'll want to do is then under that image, right click, then go to UI and image. And that'll create an image that is a child of that initial UI image. Now I have three images here and I did the same. I went to source image. I found my health counter. I made sure that it didn't clash too much with the background. We don't want to hurt our player's eyes here. So sometimes we just got to make little design decisions like that. Once you've got all of that set up in your canvas and therefore your game view, then you're ready to get going with the scripting. So what's the first thing we're going to do today? 
Well, we're going to go over to that player held script, which we created before, and we're going to make a couple of changes to it. So here we are in the player health script. A couple of things are different from last time. If you remember, the only thing that we did was have an image flash when we get hit and we would have a ball damaged become true under this public void. Now we're actually going to interact with this a little bit more and actually take into account the player's health and the health that they have chunked off from taking attack damage. So public int starting health equals three and then current health, we can leave that blank. That's what we've already set up. But we've got these new public images here. And so I've called them HP1, HP2, HP3. They're gonna reference our three damage icons. And then we're going to go down to public void, take damage into mount. So we've got current health minus equals amount, which is going to take away that amount. So the current health is going to be the current health minus the amount of damage that we dictate in another script. And typically we're just going to use one because it's a lot simpler. And we only really want to take three hits as the character in this game. So if we've got our current health at two, so if current health equals two, then we destroy that first HP one. And so we destroy that top icon. If it's one, then we destroy that second icon. And if it's zero, then we destroy that third icon. These icons will remain destroyed because we don't instantiate them. However, in the future, we might think of things that can regenerate our health. And that's it for the changes that we've done to the player health script. Now we're going to go to the script that is actually dictating the amount of damage that we take. So we go to our enemy attack script. So this is another script that we set up in the last part. And if you remember, it was just what we set up so that we target our player and fire a raycast at our player and that a spark would be instantiated at the impact point of that raycast if it did hit us. Now, the changes that we've made for this part is that we've got a reference to our player health script. So we've got player health and we're gonna nickname it P health. So we just copy the title of our player health script and we call it P health there. Then we got that public int attack damage and we've set that to one. We set up that reference to our player health script here. So we say P health equals player object dot get component player health. And there's only going to be one of these player game objects in the game so we can continue using this method. However, we're gonna use a slightly different method when we're dealing with our enemies. Now under raycast hit, so if physics.raycast, so if that ray is intercepted by an object and it registers as did hit and the only object it's going to be able to fire at is our player, then we're gonna say p.health take damage and then that's going to access our player health script and take a value of one using this public void that we've set up. And then that's it for our player health and the health system. So we can return to Unity after saving the changes. And then you'll have to go over to your inspector for your player game object. So you set the starting health to whatever you want. The current health we leave and then we're going to get these HP images in the right order. So I put HP1 there, HP2, HP3, and they all line up. So when I test it out, the first shot happens immediately. So I lose one bit of HP immediately. And then there's a second shot. And a third shot. Each time I'm shot, one of those counters is destroyed and also our current health goes down. Now, how are we going to inflict damage on our enemies? Well, we go over back to our firing script. This is where we're able to fire ourselves and instantiate those hit sparks onto our enemy game objects. And instead of getting a reference for the enemy health script in Awake, we're going to do it under void shoot now if the ray is intercepted by a game object 
we're going to try to find access to the enemy health script so the reference goes enemy health give it a little name so enemy health and then small enemy health and the first enemy health is just as we've done it in our script here equals hit dot transform dot get component enemy health so we have the reference there and if we find that the enemy health script is on this game object that we've just hit because we could fire at you know a bin or something and it's not going to have that enemy health script so we need to check so if enemy health is not null then we take damage by the amount attack damage and the amount of attack damage is our public in that we have up here and our attack damage is set to one so not only are we giving off sparks not only are we finding the name of the game object but we're searching that object for that enemy health script and then we're interacting with its take damage functionality well we're going to need an enemy health script to reference and that's something that we can look at here so once you've created a new enemy health script this is what you're going to do we're going to have a public float which is flash speed this is going to be the amount of time that we have a little bit of a damage flash on our enemy game object similar to what we have going for our player game object when they get hit except we won't be using ui for this we'll actually be using a very simple method so we're not referencing unity engine ui up here and we've got a public int that is our starting health we've got our current health also a public game object which is hurt flash and a ball which is damaged so we start off with making sure that the current health equals the starting health and we're saying that the starting health is going to be three so the current health is going to be three let's just skip void update for now and go to public void take damage in amount and so we have that same functionality going on there so our current health minus the amount the amount being one from our firing script if you remember here so this is the attack damage we are referencing this script and so the amount will become one then we've got this ball damage equals true now we've got an if statement here also that says if our current health is less than or equal to zero then we just destroy this game object let's go to void update so what does damaged actually do so if damage is true then we instantiate a hurt flash at the position and the rotation of our game object that this script is attached to and damage becomes false in fact i'm going to be at 100 with you guys we don't even need this flash speed because we're going to be using it in a different script so that is the entirety of our enemy help script very simple very easy and i'll show you how we can apply this to our enemy so we return to unity now i'm looking at my enemy and i can see their enemy health script so i've got this hurt flash and i've called it hurt marker this is a prefab that i created so if i go over to my enemy prefabs and you can see that i have hurt marker right here now before we get too far ahead of ourselves ladies and gentlemen i should probably tell you how you actually add this cube to your scene so what i did is i selected my enemy game object hit f find him right there and i right clicked on him i went to create 3d object and i created a cube what you can also do is you can duplicate your enemy game object say if you have a mesh and with that mesh you can sort of get their shape and everything just as you'd want it cubes convenient because i'm overlaying a cube with a cube once i've created my cube then i'm gonna scale it up so it's a little bit bigger i'm going to go to the assets find the material that i want to use have a look and there you can see that our cube overlays over that nicely then once you're satisfied with that cube you're just going to drag it down into your assets folder to make it a prefab and at that point it'll be safe to delete it from your game view because you can make multiple clones of that now what i did is i used an additive material on a cube 
and we were using those materials just before when creating our particle effects from the last part. So I simply just dragged this over to here to create this luminescent red cube. And the bonus with that is it's actually translucent. So we can see, so we can still see our enemy game object through it because we just want this to be sort of an overlay that signifies to our player that, well done, you got him. Now the next thing that I did was I disabled the box collider because we don't want this to act as a shield. The fire rate of our game is really dependent on how quick our player can actually shoot. We don't want to artificially limit them on that. So if they shoot too fast and this box collider is still in the way, then they're going to be like, wait, that took more than three shots. What's happening here? And they're going to realize that if they hit their enemy, for the lifetime of this object actually appearing, the enemy is going to have IV frames, invincibility frames, which isn't quite fair. Now you can see that I have an enemy hurt flash script here, and we'll just open this up. To create a script like this, you just gotta go to add component, and then you just hit new. You make a new script, call it enemy flash hurt in any way that you like. I start off with a lowercase e and then just follow through with capital letters afterwards. And you can see that Unity recognizes that it can separate the individual words when I do that. So let's go edit this script. And this script is super simple. It just deals with the lifetime of our game object. So you can think of this as our flash speed. We got void start, destroy game object by lifetime. We do it by lifetime so that we don't have to dive to and fro into Visual Studio and Unity to get the right lifetime because lifetime is a public float so we can mess around with it in the inspector. So I've got the inspector open here and my lifetime is 0.5. So let's take a look at what we've accomplished so far. Okay, when I get fired upon in this flash image, comes up, spark comes out, and my health goes down by one counter each time. I haven't set it so that we have a game over or anything like that. That'll be something that we do in the future. But if I shoot my enemy game object as one hit, they flash, two hits, they flash, three hits, and they're destroyed. I didn't want to put any health bars in this game and, you know, in real combat situations, people don't have the luxury of knowing how much health their opponents might have, even though there's nothing too realistic about what we'll be doing. I thought we'd at least have that little departure from video game tropes. Okay guys, that has been another press any button tutorial. Really enjoyed making this part. It was a big learning experience for me. If you also felt that way, then Leave a like, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff. But I'm going to keep it short and sweet for you guys. Press on and keep creating.